it's so it's so weird how like that is so fascinating to people the whole sniper aspect of it yeah. like sniper stories are just so fascinating yeah to people like why do you think that is well i mean marine scout snipers are badass what badass makes them different dudes. i mean marines are just a rare breed yeah we eat crayons, so. <laughs> you eat crayons? <laughs> That's the big joke. <laughs> we eat crayons and we're proud of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It, but like it, snipers, it's a weird, it's a different kind of like, it's a different mindset than being on the ground, like surrounded by a bunch of guys. It's like you're alone and you have what, I guess you have a radio and you wait for an order to, to take a shot and, and you have to be, you have to be different to be a sniper. Well, you, so it depends. Um, I mean, there are situations where snipers will sit there and, and wait for the call, but there's other situations where it's like, no, if you, if you see a guy with a rifle, like you, you take him down. They, mm -hmm. they have full authorization to, to shoot. Um, it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of, a lot of responsibility and a lot of, um, and it's a different, I guess it's different too, because when you're a, tell me what you think about this. Like, if you're on the ground and you're raiding a house and there's a guy charging you with a knife or a fucking gun or whatever it may be, you're fucking defending yourself. That's different than being removed from it a couple blocks away and being scoped in and literally blowing somebody apart. Yeah. Because you're not really there. You're not necessarily, you might be defending somebody else, but you're not really like in that zone of like, your whole body is just fucking charged. You yeah. Know what I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. No, I think it, I have so much respect for um, anybody in a marksmanship role like that because you have to, yeah, I mean, you, that guy has no idea if you think about that. And it's funny because I went to, I went to, I had a, I have a friend in New York and he invited me to the first uh, red carpet premiere of um, uh, the movie on Chris Kyle, American Sniper. Yeah. And it, it actually wasn't red carpet. They said red carpet, but it was just, it was behind the scenes, not the black tie stuff. And Bradley Cooper was there. Oh, really? And he's sitting on stage and we watched the movie. Amazing. And uh, they had a Q&A after. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to ask him a question. Screw it. Like, because my buddy's sitting here, dude, ask him something. Ask him something. You're, you're the only military guy here. So I was like, all right, screw it. I was like, you know, when I, I said, you know, Bradley, first of all, amazing movie. It's incredible. Um, I actually had the the um, the privilege of, of meeting Chris once in a Ford operating zone. Um, you know, just I didn't know who he was at the time or any of that. But um, anyways, I said to him, I was like, you know, I know what a sniper goes through when they when they zero in in their scope and they have to squeeze that trigger. I was like you being a brilliant actor. Did you have to put yourself in a mindset of actually convincing yourself that you're in that role and you're about to kill somebody when you squeeze that trigger and when, when you're sighting through that rifle. And he said, I a hundred percent did. I said, well, how was that for you coming down? Because I know that, you know, after I've fired at a human being and coming back to the United States after like, I know what the PTSD that I get from that and the stress, I was like, is it, did you experience any level of, of anxiety after and in, in getting yourself out of that role? And he said, absolutely he was like it's it's mind-blowing so i don't i don't know what you guys experienced over there but so imagine that if an actor has to put themselves in that kind of role so deep into the role to convince himself that when he's looking through that that site he's going to take a life now imagine actually doing it in real life and then taking that life i mean the famous sniper line is reach out and touch somebody you know i can reach out and touch you at any time and, um, you know, it's, it's a, when you think about reaching out and touching somebody like that and what that means, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Like, can you imagine what it would be like to just murder tons of innocent people and have no feelings about it? Like to have no PTSD, to have no regret or remorse or anything, just like do it and completely be numb to it. No, there's so many people like that. Yeah. I think, and one of the most, one of the things I remember most about deploying in, in war was watching, watching a, a young Marine take a life and watching how just that moment, their entire, um, 
presence just changes. It um, it almost makes me emotional to think about. Like I, I remember quite a few times where you see this happy-go-lucky marine badass, um, some of the happiest guys in my unit, and they take their first life, and everything changes. And to this day, they're just different people. It's you don't have that same happy aura. You have this. You can just see the guilt. I remember. I mean, I mean, I remember first time I shot somebody, I got, I was throwing up in the middle of the night, waking up, freaking out about it. Um, but then you get over that and then you just become numb to it and you just go. Yeah. Um, but I remember, uh, what was his name? It was a little guy in my unit too. He was like the, uh, he was the youngest one in the unit. I think, he, I want to say he was uh, 19, 20, the smallest guy too. And one of my buddies had just gotten shot in the face. Oh, fuck. Went through here, the Donica, and out here. And he was still still going at the guy. What? So he went to tackle the guy because he didn't see a gun. And um, these guys had just, we just, my other, one of the other squads had just gotten in a shootout with these guys. And they took off running, and they murked, like, a bunch of them in one of the cars. They just pulled up on them. My boys are in the road, literally like Mighty Ducks line V, just ba 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 nailing these dudes and then there's three cars behind them those cars peel off into ditches and then they they run they get out of the car and they run and so we're hunting down the rest of them and sure enough they pull up and they in the humvees and they see a couple of them one goes running and, and z goes and tries to tackle them like this because if you don't see a gun you know you don't know if it's the same guy. You're not. You don't just shoot. A lot of people think you, it's just Marines and soldiers. Or people just running psychos. away. Psychos. Yeah. No, it's no. We we don't want to do that stuff. Right. Um, even if we talk shit before the deployment, it's that's that's just shit talking. We don't actually want to go out there and do this stuff. And so he goes to tackle him, and the dude had a Saddam Hussein uh, a pistol with the seal, the ivory <laughs> handles and seal, and went like this. Shot him through here, and it went out here. And he kept running after the guy, and uh, but he fell to the ground. And this young Marine comes around the Humvee, posts up, boom, boom, boom. Two, <laughs> two to the back and one to the side of the head. Just perfect picture, perfect shots. Wow. But then watching this kid after, and I call him a kid, but that's a grown-ass man right there. Um, watching his whole demeanor change. Like everybody was excited for him. Like, dude, you got your first kill. This is awesome. Like, bro, you freaking nailed that guy, man. That's, that's textbook. Holy shit. I mean, and, uh, but you could see it in his eyes. Like he wasn't into, I mean, he was smiling, but it was so fake. He just, just everything changed. And, and the same thing that happened to me waking up in the middle of the night after my first time having to shoot somebody, um, throwing up, I got up in the middle of the night. And I uh, went out of the, the NCO barracks and went over here to the the, um, the junior Marine barracks. And um, I saw him on the side. It's like 3 a.m. and he's throwing up, like just squatting down by the, the wall. And um, he looked at me. I, I didn't I didn't go over. I didn't talk to him or anything because I just could tell he didn't want that. He yeah. just needed some time. But, I mean, there's some other guys, too. Um, yeah, after they, they took a life, it, it just your whole life changes.